Hey everybody, my name is Kyle and I work in the post-production industry. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through four steps on how to connect your After Effects expressions to an external JavaScript file. This will allow you to work faster and more efficiently, and I think it's really gonna help level up your After Effects workflow. So let's get started. Okay, so let's open up After Effects here and take a look at the project file. Feel free to download the project file below in the description, just so you can get caught up to speed so we don't have to spend some time reworking a project file. So inside of here, I have two layers. I have two text objects here, one labeled left, one labeled right, and I have a controls layer that has a few different controls in here. Essentially, what I want to have happen is with this drop down menu control, whenever I select something from this menu, it's going to affect either of those text layers or both, depending on what's selected. So let's jump into our second step, which will be adding some of the preliminary code to this After Effects project so we can get started inside of that external JavaScript file. Okie dokie. So let's add some code here and let's start with our left text object here. So let's hit T to open the opacity, alter option click on the stopwatch to open our expressions controls. And before we really add any code, let's add a comment to make sure we stay organized. So I'm going to add a comment here and just call it retrieve the JavaScript file or something similar. So let me add that in. Cool, so I added connect to.js file. And to get a external JavaScript file, we need to evaluate the contents that are inside that file. So what we're gonna do is add a dollar sign with a period and then write eval file with an open and close parenthesis followed by a semicolon. And then in here, we can just add quotation marks, which is where our file path will be stored. So we'll come back to this in step four to add that file. Next up, we after we evaluate that file, we need to gather that data that's within our After Effects project and then throw it into that function that will reside within that external file. So the stuff that we want to send are specifically the menu item from that dropdown control, and we also want to send over that custom opacity slider into that function so we know what to read and what to set and all of those good things. So let's add a comment here and say get control values or something similar. Cool, so we'll first start by getting the contents of the dropdown slider. So I'm gonna add a variable and call this menu item. I'm gonna go equal sign and I'm going to click on the controls and I'm gonna lock the effects controls up here just so it doesn't move. And then I'm going to use the pick whip and I'm going to select the drop down menu and then follow that by a semicolon. The next thing is just adding a var and I'm just gonna call this custom opacity. I'm gonna equal that to the slider by using the pick whip to the slider followed by a semicolon and we're done with that, pretty simple. Now the final thing that we need to do inside of After Effects, and this is crazy, right? Because we're not adding that much code into After Effects, all that code is gonna be done externally in that JavaScript file. We're going to run a function that we're going to write inside of that external file. So let's add a comment and call it run function or similar. Cool, and let's write a function. So let's write the function and just say eval menu because we're going to evaluate the menu, so I'm gonna write something that makes sense. Follow that by an open and close parenthesis followed by a semicolon. And I wanna add three arguments. I wanna say, hey, external JavaScript file, I want you to know what I'm passing with inside of this function here. So I'm gonna first pass the menu item that we just created above. I also wanna pass this layer's name. So I'm going to use the pick whip control and select left, and then I'm just gonna go dot name. And then the third thing I wanna pass will be the custom opacity. So I'm just gonna write custom opacity, and then we should be good to go. The one thing that we also need to add is that we have this menu item here. We're grabbing that menu item, but we wanna grab the value from the menu item. So we just need to add dot value here, just so we tell After Effects, hey, I wanna grab the value of the menu item, and then we should be all set up to go. So just in summary, we're gonna to connect to the JavaScript file here. We're gonna get some controls from After Effects. And then third, we're going to run the function eval menu. We're gonna pass menu item, which is the value of the dropdown value. We're gonna pass the name of this layer 
just because I want to add some logic within our external file that will say, hey, what is this layer that we're going to add? And we're going to know that by the name of the layer. And then I also want to pass the custom opacity slider that we have. So it's going to throw us an error just because we're not uh, evaluating any file that exists. Again, we'll come back and configure that later. So that's really all the code we need from this step. Let's move into our third step, which will be configuring that external JavaScript file. Alrighty, so let's begin with adding our external JavaScript code. So I created a new Visual Studio code file on my computer, and I just named it jsexpressions.js, so it's a JavaScript file, and I saved that within my project file here. So within Finder, I have my After Effects project, and I just put my JavaScript file alongside the project file just to keep things nice and tidy. So cool, we'll come back to that, but it's a blank slate of a JavaScript file. Oh man, what are we gonna put in here? Well, it's a blank slate, and I'm gonna walk us through step by step here. So first, again, before I do any coding, I'm gonna start by adding a comment where it's gonna say, evaluate the drop-down menu control. So let me add that in. So again, inside of After Effects, we, we, uh, we're referencing a function here called eval menu. That function doesn't exist, so we're going to create it right now. So I'm going to say function, which will create a function, and I'm going to call it eval menu. And then what I'm going to do is add some arguments. And these are going to be the same that we defined inside of After Effects. So menu item, I'm just going to call it menu. I'm going to pass the layer that we're working with and also the custom opacity. These don't have to be the same name as what we have in After Effects because I'm just gonna make it shorter. So menu, layer, custom opacity, they really just represent what we're passing in as arguments from these data points here. So there we go, we're all set up there. And then I just wanna make things a little bit simpler. This will make sense as we go on. I'm just gonna create uh, two variables. I'm gonna call one right layer and I'm going to set that to right with a semicolon and create another variable and call it left layer equals left, just like that. And really what this is, I'm just creating two simple variables to represent the names of our layers in our After Effects composition. That means we don't have to go through all of our code and then rewrite if we change the name of a layer. We can just change it up top here. Great, so we have everything set up at a basic level here. Next, we're going to write all of our logic. And to evaluate all of our logic, there's one of two ways that you can do this. You can use if statements, or you can use what's called a switch statement. And uh, as I was going through this, creating this initially, I found that using switch statements made this easier to read, and I thought it was pretty fun to write. So let's go ahead and implement that. So what we're going to do to create a switch statement is just write switch. Switch means we're basically just gonna go through all of our options here. And we want to switch or evaluate through the menu. So again, we're evaluating menu from our argument here, which is our uh, value from our menu item from After Effects. So we're gonna switch through the menu. Then I'm gonna add a curly brace here. And uh, for switch statements, we need to switch through and then look through uh, different what switch statements call our cases. So I'm going to say case one, which will be the index one of our drop down control. So our case one, if we take a look here from our drop down control, our case one is really going to be left only here because we're looking through the values. So this is going to be one, two, three, four. So we have four different cases. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in here. So our case one is going to be just like this. I'm gonna add a break, which just says, hey, after looking for case one, if it's not that, we're gonna break and go into looking for something else. I'm gonna add case two and so on and so forth here. So case two break, with the semicolon, and then I'll do case three and four quickly. Okay, cool. So after we add all four of those cases, then the final thing that we need to do is we just need to add a default case in case none of these are met, just for error handling, just to make sure nothing really breaks and, and catches fire or things like that. So if it's a default, I'm just going to return zero. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to set the opacity to zero just so they hide if none of these conditions are met. Cool. 
So essentially we have everything good to go. Uh, nothing's gonna do anything right now, so let's add what we're gonna be doing. So inside of case one, so if it's our first drop down menu control, let's add some comments here just so we know what we're doing. I'm just gonna say left visible only. I'm gonna add some comments for the rest of these. I'm gonna skip ahead and you can feel free to follow along or you can customize this to your own project. Alrighty, so now the fun begins of actually writing in our logic. So after we evaluate which dropdown uh, menu is selected, then we need to do something specific for which layer it is. So we're gonna add another switch statement. So we're gonna add a switch and we're gonna switch through the layer. So now we're referencing the layer control. And essentially, we want different things to happen depending on what layer is selected. So that's why we're passing this layer.name, which is layer here. So let's add a few different cases here. So case, uh, so our first case here, we're not gonna say case one because we're evaluating, evaluating it based on the name of the layer. So I'm gonna say if the case is the right layer, so we can really just reference our right layer here and that just eliminates having to go through all of our cases to update later. And so if it's our right layer, then we're going to set it to zero. So we're gonna say return zero with a semicolon. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna add another case here. So shift tab to go back. And I'm gonna say case left layer uh, with a uh, colon here. I'm gonna say return 100 because we are returning 100% opacity. And really what I'm gonna do here is the code looks right. I'm just gonna copy and paste this bit of code here into our other case, into our other cases so we can really just speed through this. So I'm gonna paste it, I'm gonna select everything and then just tab it over to make it look nice. And I'm just gonna update the values depending on what we're going to do. And that's why the comments are helpful. So if the right uh, is visible only, we're going to return 100 for this. In the left layer, we're gonna return zero. And then I'm gonna paste this in again. I'm gonna select everything and hit tab. And if we want both visible, we're going to return 100% opacity for both. And then for case four, I'm sure you are following along exactly here. We're not gonna set it to zero or 100. We're gonna set it to the custom opacity here, which is the slider that we're passing through the function in After Effects. So I'm gonna set this to custom opacity. And just to make it uh, really quick, I'm gonna copy and I'm going to paste that in. And let's take a look at our code to make sure everything looks right uh, to the logic that we're going through. So let's just speed through this here. So we're creating a function called eval menu and we're calling that from After Effects eval menu. In After Effects, we're passing menu item, this layer name and our custom opacity, which is our menu, our layer and custom opacity. We're creating two variables here, our right layer and left layer, called to what these layers are in After Effects. We're switching, we're switching through the menu, which is our menu.value here. So then in Visual Studio Code, if it's our first, um, if it's our first drop-down uh, menu item selected, then we're setting our left to 100, our right to zero. Case two is the other way around. Three, both are visible. Fourth, both are at custom opacity. And if none of these conditions are met, or if we add in another drop-down menu but don't add it into the code, both will be at zero. Hey, so congratulations on writing your own JavaScript file. This is huge. Congratulations, give yourself a pat on the back. Let's save this and then we'll move into step four, which will be configuring our After Effects file and testing it out. Well, hey, just to give you some more encouragement, congrats on making it this far. I hope it's made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a question below in the comments section. I'd be happy to help you out. So our final configuration is really just going back to After Effects and adding the file path for what we're evaluating. So all we need to do is to make this really quick, instead of having to locate it and typing it in ourselves, we can right click and hold down Option and just click copy this file as path name, jump back into After Effects, and then really just paste it into our quotes here. And uh, we should be all set and ready to go. And we can just save our After Effects project just to make sure we're all set and good to go.
So finally, what we need to do is just copy this code and open up the right layer, hit T on our keyboard, alter option click and paste. And now both of our layers will be using that same code. And the beautiful thing here, remember, is that all of our major expressions code lives in that external file, not inside of each layer. So if anything needs to change, we can just open up our code here, change it, come back, and we'll be good to go. We just need to save the file and we'll be set. So let's test this out, right? So let's just uh, click on write only. <laughs> the write only is shown. Both, both are shown and both custom opacity. Oh no, it disappears. Well, our custom opacity is at zero and we can adjust that no problem at all. Maybe set it to 50. And there we have it. Everything works and it's all set up to go. And I'm sure you can see how this can scale depending on the complexity of your project. Again, this is a more basic example, but I think the concepts will carry over into a much larger project file. Hey, so congratulations on making it to this point. I'm really proud of you for making it to the end. I know this tutorial was quite dense, but I'm sure it helped elevate and show you some more features about After Effects and your workflow. I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a like, that would greatly help out. And make sure to subscribe for more videos on After Effects or post-production workflows. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.